Yo, what is up guys? Delboy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hopefully you guys are doing well. If you're new here, smash that like, hit subscribe, all of that good stuff. So, the fallout to this weekend's boxing has been rather interesting from what I've observed. Of course, this past weekend, we had that diabolical pay-per-view card in which Frank Warren put on. I would say it rivals um, Nathan Cleverly versus Tony Bellew 2 as among the worst pay-per-views uh, in recent years in the UK. Terrible card from top to bottom, which didn't, uh, didn't really deliver as far as I'm concerned. But one of the main talking points from that card wasn't necessarily the main event, but actually the co-main event involving Daniel Dubois and Kevin Lorena. Now, I've made my feelings very clear on that fight. For me, at least, there was clear skullduggery at play uh, on, on numerous levels. First and foremost, I personally felt that Kevin Lorena, he threw that fight. I'll reiterate that right now. And it's interesting, right? I done my post-fight video straight away. That post-fight video, for whatever reason, did really well. And it's interesting, you know, uh, after that, I've seen quite a few people actually entertain the idea that this fight may have been fixed. It's funny how that works. But just to go through the fight again, it started off relatively innocuously. Um, both guys kind of looking for their jab, seeing, you know, feeling each other out, that sort of thing. The usual opening round. And out of nowhere, Kevin Lorena lands a looping but innocuous enough looking overhand left which catches Dubois at the top of his head. Dubois then backpedals and goes down, delayed reaction. Uh, according to him and his team, it was some sort of issue with his ankle, I believe maybe ligament damage, according to his team. Do I believe that? I'm not so convinced, but it doesn't really matter. Um, Dubois beat the count, he gets up, but then he basically goes down two more times, not due to punches or anything like that, because Lorena really wasn't pressing it like that. But Dubois basically found the canvas uh, on his own accord. He basically uh, took a knee on one occasion and was kind of bundled down on the other occasion. And after round one, it looked like Dubois was a sitting duck. And if Lorena came out in that second round, uh, more than likely he was going to stop him because... Even in that second round, Dubois didn't really look, it didn't look like he had his legs under him. But for whatever reason, Kevin Lorena decides to let him recover. I mean, Kevin Lorena took, he took no risks in round two. He didn't push the fight or, you know, really look, he, he never looked like he wanted to uh, grab the initiative and, and finish this fight. It, you know, in... For whatever reason, I mean, he just lets Daniel Dubois recover. Um, and yeah, Dubois really didn't do much in round two. He was kind of, he, Again, he was kind of just finding his feet, getting his legs back. And in round three, Dubois turns it around. He drops Kevin Lorena with a straight right hand that pierced Lorena's guard. And then he jumped on him, landed a flurry of punches and stopped him towards the end of the third round. And yeah... Just like that, Daniel Dubois made his miraculous recovery. I mean, it was almost like a WWE storyline from what I saw. And, you know, combine that with the main event, the fast that was, and then the post-fight interview from Tyson Fury. This whole thing seemed like a scripted event, quite frankly. And, but even, you know, back to the Dubois fight, I find it interesting now that people are willing to entertain the idea that fixed fights may be occurring in boxing. I mean, I think you would have to be either extremely naive, or let's be less polite, you'd have to be stupid, or, or just a liar if you believe that fixed fights aren't a thing in boxing. They most certainly are, you know. Uh, the testimonies are out there, you can ver ver Google search away. So fixed fights have occurred in boxing, and they, they are still going on in boxing, there's no doubt about it. And, you know, this fight, in, this fight in particular was extremely fishy by all accounts. Not only, not only due to Kevin Lorena and his, and his conduct in the ring, because I don't believe he had any intention 
of knocking out Daniel Dubois. But not even but even that aside, look at look at the other circumstances surrounding that fight. Look at round one, the round where Dubois was down three times. That round was cut short by around 10 seconds. Again, it must just be a coincidence, you know, when the A-side fighter's been dropped three times. That, that must just be a mistake. Incompetence, right? Cool. Round three, uh, where Lorena gets dropped by Dubois. Dubois jumps on him, lands a combination as Lorena's on the ropes. Lorena stopped on his feet. Despite the bell going, by the way, the bell went. Dubois landed a couple more shots. Then the bell goes and the referee stops it. Again, just a mistake, just just a just a coincidence, you know, like all of these bullshit calls in boxing, all of these bullshit decisions, just a coincidence. It's just incompetence. It's subjective, they say. Well, if that is truly the case, right? And all of these BS calls by referees or judges is purely down to incompetence. If that was the case, then it stands to reason that we would see these sort of calls be given in the favour of the B-side fighter as much as the A-side fighter, if it was purely incompetence. Again, we all have the ability of pattern recognition, and we know that doesn't happen. We know the vast majority of times, I would say 90-95%, the vast majority, majority of times when we get controversy in boxing, whether it be judging or um, or refereeing, things of that nature, it always goes in favour of the A-side fighter. Now, you have to ask yourself, what is the reason for that? Well, the only reason I can, I can conclude is corruption. Plainly and simply corruption. Because again, I'll reiterate, if, um, if all of these bad calls were purely down to incompetence, then again, it stands to reason that we would see a lot more bad decisions go in favour of the B-side fighter. That stands to reason, right? It kind of makes sense. But again, that, that never transpires, or rarely. So again, for me, the only real conclusion here is that this sport is rife with corruption, uh, not only from the officiating standpoint, from, from judges to referees, but I believe fighters themselves are also compromised um, for whatever reason. But, and, and again, when people talk about... It's interesting because people don't like using the word fix. It's a very dirty word. And maybe people are scared of using it because of potential uh, legal repercussions. By the way, I'm still waiting on that legal letter from Frank Warren. Uh, I'll let you know on that. Um, <laughs> but when it comes to fixing in boxing or match fixing in boxing, there are many different ways to uh, skin the cat, so to speak. Uh, for example, a fighter could be in on it. Uh, the opponent um, is compromised. He agrees to lose the fight in whatever fashion. That's the most... I think when you say fix, that is what most people kind of um, kind of think of. But the reality is there's other ways to fix a fight. Obviously, you can uh, compromise the judges, the referee. Well, even the timekeeper. I mean, in the Daniel Dubois fight, that timekeeper suddenly lost the ability to count. Who would have thought it? Again, coincidence. Nothing to see here. So yeah, there's more than one way to fix a fight. Some some ways you can actually fix a fight outright if you compromise the opponent. Uh, but alternatively, you can stack the odds against the opponent if he's not in on it by compromising the judges, the referee, the timekeeper. And then you have things like, I mean, who knows what goes on in these negotiations. Let's talk about things such as rehydration clauses, for example, which are designed, let's be honest, to uh, compromise one particular fighter. You Well, always the opponent. That's what weight, uh, rehydration clauses are used for. And you may say, well, that's the fighter's choice, whether they accept that or not. And yeah, you're partly right. It doesn't make it, it doesn't make it right, though. It doesn't make it good for the sport. It doesn't make it good for the competitive nature of boxing. And ultimately, how many fights have happened where there's been rehydration clauses and we've not known about? I mean, look at Sergei Kovalev versus Canelo Alvarez, another fight that many people are suspicious over. Take a look at that fight. It turned out, we, we learned about a week before that fight, or even a few days before that fight, that there was a rehydration clause. And by the way, 
When that fight was signed, Golden Boy denied that there was a rehydration clause, yet it was leaked a few days before that fight that there was one. So, again, if you're a betting man, I'm sure, you'd, I'm sure you would want to know if, if a fight has a rehydration clause, right? There's all sorts of ways to, to either flat out fix fights or stack the deck against the opponent. And um, quite frankly, as, as a boxing creator, and I would, I would say the same for all boxing creators, I think we need to start using the word fix far more liberally and far more regularly when we talk about these bullshit fights. Whether that be a pure robbery with terrible judging or terrible refereeing, when these type of fights come up, I think we should just use the word fix or fixed instead of robbery or controversial, you know? We should use the word fixed because ultimately, if enough people do that and that gets out on social media, enough people repeat it, that's not good PR for these uh, promotional companies. It's really not. It's really not. I mean, how long can boxing fans keep lying to themselves that this is just, you know, incompetence and it's just human error, as they say? How long can boxing fans keep lying to themselves? Of course, there's the outlier. Uh, on, on occasion where, yes, it is, it, they are just mistakes. Of course that happens. But again, if that was the case across the board, then we would see these BS decisions going either way, both in favour of the B-side fighter and the A-side fighter. I mean, I think we all know what, what the score is here. And quite frankly, I think us, us boxing creators uh, should start calling it out more directly. And in a more um, combative manner, I would say. And I would encourage you guys on social media who don't run boxing channels to do the exact same thing because it's just getting out of hand. It's getting out of hand, man. I mean, again, I, truly, that, that card I watched on Friday, on Saturday night, sorry, the Chizora card, uh, Fury Chizora, uh, the trilogy fight, that whole card, man, or the co-main and the main event, it felt like I was watching WWE. I mean, I, I was expecting fucking um, Macho Man to come running down the fucking ramp with a steel chair. It was so... It just felt fake. It just felt fake. The whole thing. A sham. A charade. Fake. Fugazi. Whatever you want to say. That's how, that's how that whole event felt to me. And, um... Yeah, man. I mean, I'm, I'm glad... To see people, you know, actually question this fight, it's, it's good to see. But uh, what's that saying? I hope, I, I wish these people keep the same energy going forwards with other fights. That's all I'll say. That's all I'll say. Um, but, again, you, you know my thoughts on the YTBC. I think a lot of guys are angling for uh, positions on certain broadcasts or jobs with certain promoters. But again, you guys know my thoughts on the YTBC. There are good channels out there still, but um, I don't know, man. I just feel like a lot of guys these days are kind of angling for a position or, uh, you know, something along those lines. But, uh, you know, can those guys be saved? Can they see the light? Who knows? What I would suggest is, you know, to those people, throw away the knee pads, reclaim your dignity, and uh, just try and be yourself, man. Try and be yourself. And tell, and tell us how you really feel. Tell us how you really feel. But yeah, I'll be interested to see whether this uh, Dubois Lorena story goes any further. I doubt it. But anyway, it's been you guy Delboy. Peace.